I just want to talk to you about hydrogen. Every time I mention hydrogen, we get people saying there are so many problems with it. And one of the problems that they cite is safety. Hydrogen in the wrong hands can be a dangerous gas, but all these things need managing. You could say the same of many other substances that we use and take for granted, which are also very, very volatile. I was driving behind a bus. It said this bus is powered by hydrogen. The passengers didn't look overly concerned. It made me think, well, I really ought to just summarize what we actually know about hydrogen and safety and what we don't. There are a lot of trials. One of the ones we talk about, apart from Gateshead, is this one in Fife, the H100. That has still got to get final approval and they've got to tick a few more boxes on the health and safety issues and also on the performance of a domestic appliances. There are hydrogen ready boilers, there are hydrogen ready cookers. They've still got to go through some fairly stringent tests and I think we need stringent tests in place for all these things. The HSC is currently carrying out a really in-depth and stringent study and they're going to report to the government and on those findings the government is going to decide whether hydrogen will play a part in future domestic heating. When you look around you you can see all the gas mains being replaced in the streets and they will be hydrogen ready. They're made of a plastic material which is inert in the presence of hydrogen. Unlike steel pipework which does suffer from something called hydrogen embrittlement and we've known about this for a long time that all the steel and iron pipe has got to be taken out of the system but that's happening anyway because a lot of it was reaching the end of its useful life now one of the solutions to this is what they call hydrogen blending where we take the natural gas that we're using at the moment and we add 20 percent hydrogen they're still assessing this in terms of safety and appliance performance but it seems quite a doable thing i'm going to talk in another video about where we get hydrogen from and how we can make it because there are a lot of people out there who say hang on a minute if we're going to make hydrogen it takes a huge amount of electricity to make that and wouldn't you be better off just using the electricity just as it is the point about hydrogen is really about the storage and if you think about that bus that i was just talking about doesn't need huge great batteries that weigh almost as much as the bus itself because it's just got hydrogen fuel cells that it tops up on a daily basis so it's really about storing the energy we can make electricity when the wind's blowing we've got all those wind turbines spinning and now they turn them off because we can't use the electricity well if we had hydrogen conversion plants that were actually making hydrogen then when the wind isn't blowing the sun isn't shining we could release that hydrogen back into the system even if all it was doing is powering a power station in the same way that we power a power station with gas at the moment. There is an awful lot of public resistance to hydrogen. There are concerns about the safety and I've talked at length about the resistance to heat pumps and this kind of falls into the same camp. There are people who are just saying, I don't want this new technology. It's not proven and I think the risks are too great for me to want to have it in my home. Now with hydrogen, you've got a much wider flammability range, which means that it takes a lot less energy to ignite it. If you did have a hydrogen leak and you had sufficient ventilation, and that is the key, then the hydrogen would disperse very, very quickly. It's tiny molecules. There wouldn't be enough of it there to present a particular hazard. Now, if you've got a boiler in a house, for example, and you've got air rushing through that boiler because there's a fan in it, then even if you've got the hydrogen burnt, if it didn't burn, it would be dispelled into the atmosphere and do no harm. So the key to it is containing the hydrogen within the casing of the boiler and within that little bit of pipework that goes from outside to inside. And I would suggest that in the future we may even have boilers that are mounted on the outside of our house. These do exist and they're widely used in continental Europe. Awful lot of them in Italy, for example. That's flammability, but there's also visibility and the hydrogen flame is actually a lot harder to see than a natural gas, a methane flame, which you can see is characteristically blue. The point is that flame detection devices have to be a lot more sensitive, a lot more reliable in order to find out whether there's actually a flame there. And if there is a flame there, then they can release the gas 
to the main burner. There's still a lot to be done on appliance development. Although there are hydrogen ready boilers in existence already, we need to make sure that the hydrogen boilers that are going to replace the methane boilers are every bit as reliable and more importantly, give out as much heat as the old methane gas boilers that we use at the moment. Although hydrogen is being used in that bus I talked about, also they're looking at using it in aeroplanes, which you might think is a recipe for a disaster. They can run an airplane very effectively with zero carbon emissions, so wouldn't that be great? The problem is the storage and the transport of that hydrogen into the airport, keeping it at a temperature where it is safe and storable. Although we've probably got good mechanics working on those buses and we've got very good mechanics working on those aeroplanes, we hope. But when it comes to domestic boilers, we know there's a very variable workforce out there, some more diligent than others, and there aren't the checks and balances in place to make sure that boilers are maintained properly and that they're installed properly. So you could get a build-up of hydrogen at high level in a building, and that's where you need detection devices, good ventilation to make sure that when that hydrogen builds up, it's taken out of the building immediately. A lot of us will remember the Space Shuttle Challenger that blew up shortly after takeoff, and that was simply due to the wrong O rings being used. The temperature was too low for them, they became brittle, and liquid hydrogen and oxygen leaked into the spaceship where it shouldn't have been and ignited. So it's vital that we test, 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 and that every component that comes into contact with hydrogen is up to the job. When we look at the current politics in our country, we need to make sure that there's transparency and that there's honesty and that any incidents involving hydrogen are reported and examined properly. We don't want another Grenfell situation where people are passing off materials which just aren't suitable for the task. There's a lot to go at there, isn't there? Not least that a lot of homes are going to have to be converted. There's going to have to be a massive program of going in and converting boilers and all kinds of appliances to make sure that they're hydrogen safe. Back in the day when North Sea gas came in and we changed from coal gas to natural gas as we call it, we had to convert and there were a lot of gas fitters who were working seven days a week going into people's homes converting their appliances. So these things have to be done at some time. We have to bite the bullet, feel the pain and go through the process. And if the aim is for us to have a carbon free future, we have to think Think about the cost of that heat pumps in one solution but it's not going to be a solution for everybody so either we keep the methane gas or we start moving over to an alternative gas or as i said earlier a blend of gases hydrogen can work and it needs to be safe it needs to have stringent monitoring and we need to make sure that that workforce is up to the job would you trust a gas fitter to work on your appliance if it contained hydrogen rather than natural gas when you have something in the building industry that is so sensitive so critical that it takes a very high degree of skill and supervision in order for it to work maybe it just needs redesigning maybe that idea of putting boilers on the outside of the house where any leaks will do no harm is really the way to go. Let me know what you think. Would you have hydrogen in your home? Are you one of the people that's resistant to it? Because unless we can bring the public on board, it's going to be another story like heat pumps where the uptake is very low indeed. <laughs>